If I was just to keep 10 fragrances for life, what would they be? Let's talk about that. Hey Frag Fam, welcome to another video from Proverbs 27, 9 Fragrances. John here, and today we're doing a tag video on keeping just 10 fragrances for life. So if you would go ahead and hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are on. That way you're notified every time we upload this sweet smelling fragrance related content. Also like the video and leave me a comment down below. So tag video here, keeping just 10 fragrances for life. <clears throat> I was thinking about this and thinking about how I would choose 10 fragrances. And honestly, for me, um, it was a hard decision and not probably because of, you know, most of the reviewers on here. Every, you know, every reviewer I've ever seen do this tag, it's like, oh, I couldn't, you know, there were so many, I couldn't narrow it down to 10. Well, for me, it's honestly the opposite. I, I love fragrances. This is why I'm, you know, have this channel and why I've owned, you know, I don't know. I've never really counted, but I would say, you know, I know I've got a hundred fragrances here and there's been several I've gotten rid of. So I would say I've owned probably 150 fragrances and I've got samples of probably 250 if I was to add them all together. So, um, I've smelled a lot of different things. For me, there, I, it was hard for me to pick 10 that I couldn't live without, basically. You know, um, I'm really fluid in my collection. There's not, you know, I was talking to a, a friend and we were doing some trades and things and um, there was a bunch of fragrances that he just, you know, we just see it differently. Um, you know, he, he didn't want to let go of things and I was I'm always willing to let go of my favorite things you know um, the only thing that I couldn't get rid of is if something was just discontinued and I absolutely love it and um, I would be afraid that I wouldn't be able to get it again and one of those is on this list at least one of them um, so let's get started what would my 10 fragrances be so I'm going to start off with, I think, um, you know, we, we wear fragrances for a few different reasons. Number one, we wear them because we want other people to think that we smell pleasant. So we wear fragrances for other people. And uh, then we also wear fragrances um, maybe for one specific person. If it's your your spouse or your, you know... Um, Maybe your mom really likes the way something smells on you, or, you know, again, your spouse really likes the way something smells on you. Even if you don't really love it, you know, you may wear it. And then there's fragrances that you don't care if anybody likes it or not. You love it, and so you wear it that way. You know, a lot of times I'll wear two or three different fragrances at the same time. I will have whatever I'm wearing for the day, and it's typically going to be something, you know, mass appealing. And then on my wrist or on the back of my hand, I'll have maybe one on each hand of something that I just love and want to smell all day and that I can enjoy. Um, so I'm going to get started with just a couple of fragrances that are mass appealers that I would keep in my collection just because, um, because they're mass appealing. And I'll start with, with one. Let's see. You, you've got to have a fresh blue fragrance if you work in an office, if you want compliments, if you um, are wanting something versatile that you can wear dressed up or dressed down, blue fragrances really fit that, uh, you know, that niche. And there's a bunch of really good ones. And I have a bunch. I really like blue fragrances. It's funny, some of the real main ones I don't own, like I don't have blue to Chanel, but I've got some fragrances that smell very similar to it. Um, you know, Rocious Loam is a new one that I have that, that could go here. Um, of all the blue fragrances, though, that, you know, went through my mind, 
the one that I think I would have to keep and put on here would be this one. Uh, and it's Versace Dylan Blue. And what I love about it is it's got that that lift and that, you know, there's this Ambroxan, there's, <coughs> there's this fruity, sweet accord on top. It's got a lot of tonka. Um, you know, it's just got that kind of clean, fresh, a little bit shower gelish type. It just smells like clean and vibrant. But there's some spices and there's a spiciness to it. And I really like spices in my fragrance. And so it's got enough of that, you know, Ferragamo F Black and, and um, you know, the, all the different Sauvages and all the different, y, you know, y, the Y line from Yves Saint Laurent. And, you know, there's all these different blue fragrances out there. But uh, of all of them, the one that I think I would choose that I like the best is Versace Pour Homme Dylan Blue. Staying in that same vein, this one is probably considered a blue fragrance as well. At least I know it is. Um, but I would keep Dior Sauvage. Dior is one of my three favorite, favorite fragrance houses. I think they are, um, I mean, I prefer them to Chanel. Uh, I think they're behind Guerlain probably in my favorite list. But I really love the House of Dior and have and have owned a lot of their fragrances. But this is my wife's favorite fragrance. And I would pick the Eau de Parfum if I had to keep, you know, just one because I prefer it. She doesn't know the difference. Um, I wear the Eau de Toilette more because I have a super big bottle of it. And uh, I'm just going to keep it because my wife loves it. And of all my fragrances... It's one that she actually likes, and she doesn't like many of them. Most of my fragrances she sm she thinks smells like an old lady. Uh, so, anyways, and some of those are going to be on this list. So, um, keeping with the mass appealing and the, you know, modern fragrances, I would need one to wear in the wintertime. Um, Dylan Blue, you could now the Sauvage you can pull off all year long. Dylan Blue uh, is a good cold weather fragrance, but I'd want something that has some a warm quality, warm nature to it. There's a lot of good ones, but I think my favorite is this one here, um, Halloween Man X. Um, I heard Ash from Gent Sense sing its praises for you know a lot of a lot of videos. I finally got it. And when I got it, I loved it. I love coffee, and it has the, the amber, the warm woods and resins. You can smell, you can tell it's got a lot of that tonko bean sweetness, but that coffee note really warms it up, and this makes this a absolutely great cold weather, mass appealing, fresh fragrance. All right, so next I'm gonna go to uh, some fragrances that are classics that I don't, I, I may not wear in my regular rotation, but they are ones that I do spray for myself a lot and wear on the backs of my hands. Um, and these are both classics. One is a spring and summer fragrance, and that is Dior again. And this is Eau Sauvage. Uh, has one of the best citrus openings I've ever smelled. The lemon here, it is not synthetic at all. It's so rounded. Uh, there's bergamot. It's got some basil to kind of give it an abrasious quality. <clears throat> there's a beautiful mid floral here highlighted by jasmine, which smells like honeysuckle. And then it dries down. It's got a great clean, soapy vetiver base to it. It is just absolutely great. Springtime in a bottle. I've, I've said before that um, to me, that's probably what the Garden of Eden smells like. Another classic one here, this one from the House of Guerlain, and it is Heritage. And I have it in the Eau de Parfum as well as the Eau de Toilette. If I had to keep one, I would keep the Eau de Toilette uh, because the tobacco note is toned down a little bit in this one. This one with being Eau de Toilette concentration, it, it has more 
lift. It's got better projection. You know, you, you trade projection for longevity in an eau de toilette to an eau de parfum, but I don't mind respraying. Um, I like them a little more light and airy rather than thick, heavy, sweet, syrupy. Okay, that's just my style. So Heritage has all the notes in the apothecary in it. You've got, you know, um, citruses and, and these great top notes. You've got all you've got all these different bouquet of floral notes in the middle, um, rose and geranium and uh, carnation, a lot of different middle notes. Then you've got uh, orris root and you've got sandalwood. You've got you you know a nice woody base. It's it's a classy version of a a woody spicy aromatic fragrance. It's it's like if you took Dolce & Gabbana the one and you put a lot of, you know, extra things in it, a lot to give it, you know, all these different nuances or Bentley uh, for men intense and you added all these different um, nuances to it. This is the Rolls Royce of fragrances like that in my opinion. It's classy. It is a gentleman style fragrance. It's, you know, most people in their 20s or under is not going to appreciate it, uh, but I really love it. Um, I wear it more in the colder months, um, but that's one that I definitely wear for myself um, a lot. So I couldn't imagine not having it to smell, so I'd have to keep it. Um, and then... I'm going to go with, uh, I love fougeres, and so I would have to keep uh, some fougeres, some barbershop style fragrances, and my favorite ones are the really classy ones, uh, and so I would keep Tom Ford Beau Du Jour. This is one that my wife hates. My, my youngest son thinks it's atrocious. Um, smelled like it smelled urine to him and I, I find a lot of old classic fragrances urine even when they don't contain civet or um, castorium uh, I think it may be the oat moss in some of them the way the oat moss comes across you know for like uh, Beaucheron Pour Homme for instance has a real just kind of pissy you know type scent to it um, and, uh, and there's a lot of different fragrances. Aramis, you know, and there's no kind of animal note listed. I don't get that at all from Tom Ford Beau Du Jour. To me, it's just, it's just smells like really classy barbershop, just dressed up to the hilt. Another one like that, and that's my backup bottle, so I'm not going to take it out. You know what it looks like. Another one like that is this one. Zaharoff Signature Pour On. And honestly, if I had to pick between this one and this one, I would have to pick this one. And, and these are in no particular order. Um, this one is probably my, it, you know, it, it, it goes back and forth, but this very well could be my all-time favorite fragrance, period. Just really classy barbershop style fragrance, but there's so much more to it than that. There's all this these resins and these, you know, like frankincense and myrrh and um, incense. And it, it just really has a high, it's a churched up, just class. I mean, I hate to keep using the same words over and over. But I don't know what it is about it. The juice is purple, but when I smell it, the color that comes to my mind is purple too. Um, the first few times, I didn't even recognize this as a barbershop fragrance. It was so classy. But then when you kind of get used to knowing what that is, yeah, it does have fougere qualities, but it's, it's just got so much more than that as well. Um, we'll put, I'm running out of room here. But anyways, let me go with, now I've got three left. I'm gonna go with one that 
Um, it's a designer, but it's one that I just couldn't live without, and that's the original Amen by Terry Mugler. Um, that car note, that rubber note, everybody hates. I love it. I couldn't imagine this fragrance without it. It's, you know, it's sweet and it's alluring and it's, it's, it's dark all at the same time. It's a great cold weather fragrance. Um, I, I think Halloween Man X is similar to it, but it's not similar enough that I wouldn't want to keep them both. And uh, so I ha that's one of my favorite designers of all time. I'd have to keep it. Two more. Last two um, from my favorite fragrance house, um, again, Guerlain. And this is Lone Mediel Extreme, I think is the one that I would keep. I really like them all. And in fact, I think the EDT is the most versatile out of the whole line. Um, I went back and forth on the EDT and this one. Um, and I think if I could, I would probably keep this one because the cherry note is kicked up. It has an additional plum note that's really nice. The leather, um, the almond, the creaminess, it's just, it's great. The EDT is fabulous as well. The EDP is the one everybody lauds until this one come out. And I think Extreme has uh, passed it, but the whole line is good. Um, I would have to keep Guerlain Long Medial Extreme. And the last one is one of those that I would just have to keep because I'm, I'm just afraid I would never be able to find it again. Um, it's one of those for me, and it's this one, Bottega Veneta, uh, Pour On Parfum, Parfum. I've said this every time I talk about this particular fragrance. If all you've ever smelled from this line is the EDT, you've never smelled what this line uh, potential was because the EDT is so flat. It's like a, it's like once you've smelled this. Now, if you've only ever smelled the EDT and you like it, I, all I can say is you need to get this if you can because it's like the difference in watching a black and white television with the EDT to watching uh, an 8K television with a parfum. It's so much more brighter and juicier and spicier and sweeter. It's like everything is turned up to the max. The leather is better. The The woods are brighter and better. And um, it's just so, so good. This is one of those that I had a sample of. Didn't know the difference in EDPs and EDTs. Thought that they would smell the same. One would just last longer. So I bought a big bottle of the EDT and I was like, this is not the same thing. And this thing, you know, people say it's discontinued and then they say it's not. It's just, you know, they don't make a lot and the stock goes quick. I don't know. All I know is I finally, you know, I'd almost bought a bottle. This 50 ml sells for around 200 to $300 sometimes for the parfum. I was patient and I found it at an Australian website for, you know, retail price. It was around a hundred bucks. And um, I would never trade that bottle or sell that bottle. And so those are my 10 for life. Now, who am I gonna tag in this video? What reviewers am I gonna tag? I'm not gonna tag any uh, reviewer. Um, in fact, let me turn the camera around for a moment. There we go, guys. All right. So not tagging any reviewers in this. I'm tagging my viewers. What fragrances would you keep for life if you was to start over from scratch? And you may think, I, I don't even have 10 fragrances. Well, that's fine. You know, if you've got whatever, just cut the list down. Narrow your list down to, well, I, I could keep these three or whatever. Uh, but I want to hear from you. So if you've watched this video, um, please leave me a comment and let me know what 10 or 5 or 3 fragrances that you would want to keep for life. Um, and we'll be able to look over those and, and uh, appreciate that feedback and everything. 
I don't know how many more of these videos I'm going to make. I may make, this may be my last. I may make, you know, a thousand more. Uh, but I want to say thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, and doing all those things. And until we see you down the road, I say God bless. Frag on frag, fam.